The time is ticking down until 2024, and as the holidays keep us busy, Colin Evans from Evans Financial Group wants to remind all of us about a few key things to keep in mind as we near the end of the 2024 year. Colin, tell us three things to pay special attention to as we approach the end of the year, which is crazy that it's already here. It, it flew. Mm. It's like, you know, we started January like, oh, what's going to happen in 23? And now here we are right into the end of it already. I feel like after 2020, every single year just keeps getting quicker, though, right? It like does. the longest well, year of like everyone's life. That was. I think <laughs> that was the Mondayest Monday of, it, of all years yes. combined. Yes. Um, so a couple of things. We put together three things that are good year end reminders that are out there. Roth conversion being the first one. And this we've spoken about this in the past and Roth conversions um, as we all kind of are under the same agreements that we all believe that taxes are going to go up in the future, mm -hmm. converting those dollars now because again, without sounding political, we are still in Trump's tax codes, which are some of the lowest the, in the country has ever seen. So what that means is by doing a conversion on an IRA to a 401k into Roth dollars, pay the taxes now, and the growth on there down the road becomes income tax free. So it's a it's a good time to think about that, being that we might see tax increases coming in the future. Now, one of our big ones that we've seen quite a bit of as of late are qualified charitable distributions. And how this kind of works is we have, a, you know, a lot of us are very, very charitable givers. Mm -hmm. And we see a whole lot because we're in the South and the, as we kind of say in the Bible Belt, and a, a lot of it is to our churches. Mm -hmm. and. What we see is clients that are needing to meet uh, our next point, required minimum distributions, they say, I have to pull money out of my retirement accounts to satisfy the IRS at, because they want me to pull this out because it's tax time. Oddly enough, there's a little bit of a loophole with this qualified charitable distribution. And just per se, uh, a couple has to, gives $5,000 to their church at the end of the year. And that $5,000 might also be the amount they have to take out of their IRA to appease the IRS. Well, if they take it personally, they have to pay taxes on it and they might net say 4,000. Well, if they want to say we would give five, I, we have to come up with another thousand dollars to give our church. Or we can send it directly from the company over to the church and the client or the person doesn't have to pay taxes on it. It'll go from one transfer from the company directly to the church. The church gets their $5,000 and they don't have to pay taxes on it. So it kind of works as a wow. huge benefit yeah. and it saves, it saves the person from having to pay additional taxes right. and their organization gets the funds that they want to do. And it kind of falls right into number three is it satisfies the required minimum distribution. The age on that used to be at age 70 and a half Uncle Sam says, you know what? You saved your money. You put it all back in your retirement accounts. It's time for you to take it out because we want our taxes on it. And so it used to be 70 and a half was kind of the, the time frame when they said, well, at the end of 2022, the SECURE Act put into play, they kind of bumped that up to age 72. Well, as of late, they actually bumped it up to now age 73. So they do get a little bit of a deferral, but the required minimum distribution is a huge thing that many folks forget about because it has to be done by the end of the year to pay those taxes. So it is something that we want to pay attention to because if they are not taking the required minimum distributions, Uncle Sam is going to hammer you up to 50% on a taxable penalty, which is huge. Which is absolutely mm -hmm. huge. And we've that seen that. Hurt. We've seen it. We've had people come in and said, hey, we're no clients, but um, say, well, you haven't taken your distributions. Oh, we didn't know. Oh, goodness. So it's, you know, we, we try and make sure it's like we have to send this out by email, by letter, by newsletter, by social media, just as reminders. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people still, they might not pay attention to that and they forget and they can be opted with some hefty IRS tax penalties if they're not paying attention to the required minimum distributions. All those uh, sneaker things that pop up at the end, like we've talked about plenty of times before, of hidden taxes everywhere. It, yeah, it really is. And, you know, as we're trying to, you know, mitigate that, because that's a big deal when it goes into retirement and we're working on fixed incomes and we're, you know, it's like, hey, if I can minimize the amount of taxes that I have to pay, 
this is a huge factor, especially right. when we, you know, when we're discussing like our discussion last week on inflation. You know, what this, if I'm keeping more on my side of the table, this helps me combat that, and I've got more money in my pocket as opposed to Uncle Sam's pocket. There you go. <laughs> That's what we want, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Colin, thank you for being here today and for talking to us about uh, the three end of year things to do on your to-do list. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. We'll see you next week.